recording and we're going to be using several different colors. And you can see that I actually have two shades of each color, except for the yellow. Um, these are dual brush pens. These are a larger brush and the other side has a bullet tip. So it's a really fine tip. It will only give you, um, it'll give you a mono line, only one thickness. We're also going to be using the Tombow Food and Asoki, which is a smaller tipped brush pen. You can see the difference in the size of the pens. The dual tip is much bigger. The Food and Asoki is much smaller. So if you have a small project that you're working on where you have a little, uh, you know, a smaller writing space or you're addressing an envelope or making a card, the Food and Asoki is really good because it has a smaller tip and it allows you to write a lot smaller. These do come in colors, but tonight we're gonna to be using the black one. And the Food Nisoki Black actually comes in two different tips, um, flexibilities of tips. There is the soft tip, which has the black barrel. And I'm actually gonna be using that one tonight. I'm a little more comfortable using the soft tip. That's just my preference. Um, and the hard tip, is not as flexible and that comes in the blue barrel. You can get these as a two pack. So you can decide, uh, you know, as your lettering, remember lettering, um, some people like a firmer tip, some people like a more flexible tip. So I encourage you to try them out, see which one you like. Um, everybody, you know, is different. So I'm going to be using the soft tip, which is the black barrel. I'm going to be using that one tonight. I'm a little more comfortable with that. We're also going to need a pencil and an eraser. Again, Tombow products. Um, this is from the mono line. I'm using an HB pencil, which I really love for sketching. It's easy to erase. It's smooth on the paper. And then the mono eraser, my favorite eraser. It literally erases anything. It's amazing. So definitely um, invest in some Tombow products. I know you're going to love them. And um, you may see a specialty pen right here. This is clear. This is our colorless blur. We're going to be using this to help to blend the colors to kind of create that ombre, you know, gradient effect. So I will show you all about this one. There's, this pen really is really cool. Um, usually when you get a pack and you see this, I, the first time I ever saw it, I was like, what is this? This has no color, what do I do with it? So it throws a lot of new letterers off because they don't know what to do with it. But once you learn how to use it, it's amazing. So I think you're really going to like to see how it works, all right? So those are gonna be um, our tools that we're gonna use. Put these back in my cup here. And let's talk about paper. Um, paper is really important when it comes to your brush pens. Your brush pens, um, you want your to prolong the life of the, of the tip. And you want the tip to be smooth and not create jagged edges. So paper is really important. Tonight, I'm going to be using the Bristol um, paper from Canson. I love this brand. Um, there are tons of other brands out there. This is just what I have found that I really love. Um, and the Bristol paper is really nice. It's, it's thicker. So if you're going to do a final piece that maybe you want to hang up, you know, in your office or somewhere or in your living room, it's good to use kind of a thicker paper. And this is good for your brush pens. Um, my go-to paper when I do practice is the Canson marker paper. This paper is um, a lot thinner, so it's kind of see-through, which is great for practicing and sketching, um, but it doesn't make great for a final piece because it's not really that thick. So tonight we're gonna be using the Bristol. Um, Tiffany, hi, I see your question. Um, are you gonna use the markers like their watercolors? Not tonight, but you can. Tombow markers um, can be blended and used with water. Um, they are fabulous for watercolor and they are really, really fun to use as watercolor, but unfortunately we're not going to do that tonight. 
Um, but there's definitely tons of tutorials you can find online. Um, you can even find on my social media, um, Amanda Camerata. I have some watercolor um, tutorials on there and things like that. So that's an excellent question because you can use them for watercolor and that's, they do blend very easily. But tonight we're gonna use the colorless blender for blending versus um, water. So great question. So feel free if you have any questions, feel free to ask them at any time. I'm kind of glancing over at my question box. So um, that way I, you know, I can kind of see what you guys are wondering. All right, so let's get started because we kind of have a lot to do. So we're gonna get our paper. And again, I'm using Canton Bristol paper. And I am a very visual person. I always sketch first, um, always, always, always. I had sketched this prior when I made, you know, was making a design, this was my sketch. Um, sketching is really important because it just kind of allows you to get your ideas down, get everything where you want it, and you can erase at any time. When you ink, you can erase. So if you mess up, you have to really kind of start all over again. So sketching is a really um, important part of my process, and I know not everyone sketches, um, but I do. And I just like having a visual. I like seeing where everything is going to go. So I'm going to start you guys tonight. We're going to sketch and we're going to make our sketch all the way till the final piece. So you can kind of give you a peek into my sketching process and how I lay out a design like this, because it can look a little tricky. It can be intimidating to learn um, layouts. And I created a very simple layout for you guys. I basically stacked the words on top of each other and kind of fit them together like puzzle pieces. I didn't do anything super fancy, just stayed with some basic script and fit the words together and then filled in the negative space with the flowers, okay? So that's a really great way to start if you're new to lettering and you're new to layouts. Stacking the words is one of the easiest ways to you know, create a, a simple but beautiful layout. All right, so let's get started. I have my pencil and I'm going to draw some lines on, on a lightly straight across. There's just a little bit of a slant. It just adds a little bit of extra visual interest, um, you know, versus just being totally horizontal. So I like to give myself a little bit of a, of a guideline of where I'm going to be putting my words. And so I'm just going to sketch some lines. And I have four, if you see on my sketch, I have four lines here. So I'm going to create four lines and I'm kind of, I'm putting them sort of close together. I, I don't want my letters to be super huge um, because I am using a smaller tipped pen and this isn't a, a huge piece of art. So I want my letters to kind of be about an, about an inch. Um, you feel free to use a ruler if you want to. It's always good to have a ruler. You can kind of, you know, measure your lines, make them straight if you need to. Um, but sometimes I just kind of eyeball it like what I'm doing now. And I made the space. This is now, remember, these lines are just a guideline. I'm, I may not necessarily sit my words right on top, but it's kind of gives me that slant that I need. Uh, when I'm sketching, I'm going to start here, my letters. I'm just doing a quick kind of like a skeleton outline. I'm not doing anything super fancy. I'm not adding in any of my, um, you know, downstrokes or anything like that. I'm just simply, getting an idea of where I want my words to go. And if you can tell by my sketch, I am using what we like to call the bounce technique, where my letters are bouncing off of the baseline. First learn to letter, you are keeping your letters straight on you know, one straight line. 
but you can break the rules once you learn them. Um, and bouncing is really, really fun because it adds extra visual interest to your letters and just makes it a little more whimsical and modern as opposed to like the traditional, you know, straight across. So you can see that I'm pulling down some of my, these will be my downstrokes. I'm pulling some of them down to kind of give it that bounce. And that also helps you fit your words together like puzzle pieces. Think of these words as puzzle pieces and we're filling them in into the spaces. So you see, I have an, kind of an A, a spot beneath my A between my R and my T. So I'm gonna stick the F right up in there. Fits perfect, put my four and you can see how they all fit in there like little puzzle pieces. Okay. And again, I'm not sketching my words super huge. I don't want them to be huge. I'm trying to keep them about an inch um, height. So we'll fit the eight right in here. We'll bounce this. All right. So I have my words, they're all fit together. We did a little bit of bouncing to kind of fill in this negative space. So it looks, it's not a huge empty space right there. And I'm going to not sketch the flowers yet. I'm going to do my words first. Um, we're gonna letter the words. And I, another kind of tip when I'm sketching, I don't press very hard with the pencil because I'm not, um, I don't wanna make make a really hard line that may be difficult to, um, the Tombow erasers are really awesome. So it, they do erase kind of really heavy, dark lines, but when I am sketching, I'm just doing it with a very light, you know, light touch, light hand. I'm just sort of sketching along. I'm not worrying about where my downstrokes and, you know, my upstrokes need to be in the sketching phase. I'm just getting my words out on the paper where I want them to be. All right, so our sketch looks good. And now we're going to grab our brush pen and we're now gonna let her right over top of our sketch. And I'm gonna be using the Tombow Food and Isoki in black. This is a smaller tipped pen. When you are using a brush pen, if you're not familiar with using a brush pen, um, it is really important to hold your brush pen correctly, or you're not going to be able to get those thin and thick lines that um, you know, you're after for, for this kind of brush script. So a 45 degree angle is perfect. Your pen should be you know, back a little bit, never forward like this. This way is not, you're not gonna be able to maneuver the tip. It needs to be back. So you're ready to apply your pressure um, for your up strokes and your down strokes. So I'm just gonna go start going right over my pencil here. So I'm gonna start with my eye. When I make a downstroke, I'm starting with heavy pressure. I'm really pushing down on the tip of the pen to create that thick line. To do an upstroke, I'm just doing a little bit of pressure. I'm barely pushing just enough where the ink glides across the page. Okay, so there's our eye. And you can always, if there's ever a little kind of space, you can kind of always kind of go back in and fill that, fill that in. It's not cheating, it's okay. If you don't get a perfectly straight line. Sometimes you don't get a perfectly straight line and that's okay. All right, let's move on to am. So for the A, remember we need to lift our pen after each stroke. So I'm doing my downstroke and my M and I'm going to do my overturns, lifting my pen after each stroke. My lines are a little funky. I'm a little nervous. So my lines are a little shaky, um, but that's completely natural and normal. Um, you know, shakiness is all a part of lettering. Um, sometimes if you're nervous, like I am, I'm doing a live, your hand can be a little shaky. Um, if you drink too much coffee while you're lettering, you can get a little shaky too. 
So I advise you not to drink a whole lot of coffee when you are lettering. So I'm going along, lifting my pen after each stroke and I'm pretty much staying on my sketch. Sometimes I veer off of my sketch and that's okay. Kind of just, sometimes I wanna move a line different than what I sketched and that's okay too. Kind of use your sketch as a guide to what you're doing. And uh, tonight we're doing this quote. I am grateful for all I have. I am a firm believer in the connection between mental health and art. Quotes, um, lettering, you know, inspiring words, phrases really helps you to internalize their meaning. And then you can kind of look back at them and it just, you know, it means a lot. So I kind of chose this phrase because, you know, with everything going on in the world right now, it's really important for us to, you know, always be grateful for what we do have. So I hope that you like this quote as much as I do. All right. So I got my grateful. I'm going to add my crossbar here for my T. This line that goes across here is called a crossbar. And you can make your crossbar whatever kind of line shape you want. Um, you could make it straight across. You could fit a nice long one right in this space. Look at the space that you have right here. I always, this is kind of my go-to for my crossbars. And as you letter, you'll kind of, um, um, you know, you'll purse. And this is kind of one of the ways I love to do a crossbar. Um, hi, L. Thank you for joining us. Um, I am using, let me just peek at the paper real quick. I am using the Brist Canson Bristol paper. That's what I'm using tonight. Canson Bristol paper. It's perfect for your brush pens and it's nice and heavy for a good final piece if you wanna hang something up. Okay, so let's keep going. So let's go down to the four. Now F's. Fs are pretty much one fluid motion. Sometimes it feels like forever to get around there. Same for O's. You're not stopping in the middle. Here's our four. Uh -huh. Let's see. Using the Tombow Food and Asoki, and I'm using the soft tip, which is the black barrel. I love the flexibility in the tip, but not everyone likes that. So I encourage you to try, you know, try both, try the hard tip too, and see if you like that one a little bit better. We all have um, different preferences. So it's important to, you know, find a pen that you like, find a pen that works for you. Um, you know, don't use a pen just because, you know, someone that, you, you know, a letter that you love, that's what they use. If you don't like that pen, you don't have to use that pen. You know, find something that's, that's comfortable for you. And I mean, I love Tombow, but you know, not everybody loves Tombow and that that's okay. You lettering is really very individual. So you have to find tools that you are comfortable using and you feel confident using so that you can be successful. All right. So do our each. And you can see how slow I am moving. Um, another really important tip um, besides, you know, we have to lift our pen after each stroke. Slow, 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 slow. Lettering is a slow, mindful activity. Um, a lot of people are surprised to, um, you know, when I say you will have cleaner strokes the slower you go um, to a lot of people that you would think it's the opposite, that you would have a smoother line going faster, but that's not true. The slower you go, the better and cleaner your lines will be. So I'm going very slow. Doing each stroke. 
one at a time. Oop. Kind of had a little jump there. And that will happen. Even experienced letterers kind of get little shaky lines and it's completely normal. So don't get discouraged if your lines are not completely straight. That's kind of one of the beautiful things about hand lettering is that you are doing this by hand. So it's not created on a computer. Not every single line is completely perfect. And I feel like that's really what gives, you know, the true beauty of hand lettering. All right. So we have lettered out our words with our black uh, Tombow food and soaky. So we are done with this pen right now. So put back my thing. All right. So now we have all these lines here and we're going to erase them. Um, what's great about this pen is it's already dry. You're not going to have to worry about smudging. Um, you can see I can rub my finger on it. It is already dry. So we are able to freely erase. We have already done, get rid of these lines. And then we'll move on to our flowers. And you can see how great I, why I love these erasers. They erase so cleanly and you don't really, you don't get a lot of, you know, there are plastic erasers. So you don't really even get a lot of, um, you know, those little mess. You don't really get a whole lot. And it did not ruin our ink, didn't um, lighten our ink at all or anything like that. So there we are, we still have our ink. Okay. So now we are going to add, so since we are going to be blending the, um, this part of our flower, like the petals, the petal part, we're going to be blending. I don't want to erase on top of the blending because um, if you erase it too hard, it may kind of pill the paper a little bit and kind of mess up what we blended. So. Um, we're not going to erase over that, um, but we are going to kind of very lightly kind of just give a little sketch of where we're going to put the flowers. And I'm just going to do this part, um, the stem, just so I kind of have an idea. So we're gonna do a little bit of kind of if comfortable with freehanding, because freehanding can be a little um, freehanding. Here's a great tip for you. The Canson marker, marker paper is see-through. So if you do your sketch like this, and then you put another piece of paper over top, you'll be able to see right through to your sketch, and you'll be able to then work right over top. Um, I does take some practice to get used to freehanding things. Um, this is, I, that's why I love this paper, this marker paper, because you can, um, you know, see through it, but we're going to just do our best because sometimes that's all we can do is just do our best. So we're going to add our flowers. So I'm going to look at my example here. I'm working off my example. We're going to put a stem right here, and I'm just going to kind of do like a really light line. You may not even really be able to see it. I'm just doing it very lightly. Um, we'll have another stem down here. We have another stem over here and around here. And you can see where I'm putting my flowers. I am surrounding the words. So I'm kind of creating almost like a wreath or like a frame around the words. And I'm filling in all of this negative space that's left here. Like we have this gigantic space right here between these words, fill it in with a flower. Um, this empty space over here, we're gonna fill it in with a flower. So when you're working on your layouts, um, you know, put your words how you want. And then if you have, you know, those space, that's where your little illustrations go or your little embellishments. You can add flowers or stars or, um, you know, any other little drawings kind of fill in that negative space. 
Okay. Oh, now to the fun stuff because these brush pens are my absolute favorite. This is what I started lettering with. Um, and they still remain my favorite all these years ago. I've been lettering for about um, six years and these were my first pens I ever picked up and I still love them as much today as I did then. So I know you're gonna love them too. All right, so I have two shades of each color except for the yellow because we are going to be blending. And so when you are blending, you need to use um, contrasting colors or colors that are in the same color family, a dark or a light. That's kind of my go-to way to blend is using a dark shade and a light shade in the same color family. So that helps to create that um, ombre gradient that you see right here. I use two different colors of pink to help um, create kind of that darkness here and then it goes up to the light, All right? So let's start with our stems. Let's fill our stems in and I'm gonna be using two different colors for the stems. I'm gonna be using this lighter green, which is number 133. All your Tombow pens, your dual brush pens are all numbered. They all have a number and they have a name. Um, the number is always on the barrel. The name is not. You can look up all the names on the Tombow website. They have all of the names on there. You can even get a, a color chart where you can chart all your pens and see their names and their numbers, but the numbers are on here. Every color has a number. So I'm gonna be starting with 133, which is this light green. And for my stems, I'm gonna be using the bullet point, which is gonna be the smaller tip on your dual brush pen. It's called dual because there's two. And so your smaller is only gonna produce one line. And that's great for our stems because I'm gonna have a really just kind of a thin line. And then we can add our leaves. I'm gonna fill in our leaves. All right, now we're gonna move right to some blending. While that is still wet, I'm going to grab my darker green, which is a 173. And I'm going to add just a little bit of dark green at the very kind of inside here, just a little bit and a little bit on the stem. I'm then going to grab the colorless blender and I'm going to take this darker color and rub it up into the lighter color. So it will blend and create a like ombre gradient. And you don't need to do a whole lot. If you over blend, it will kind of pill your paper and you'll, it's not going to sit as nice. So you just need a little bit to get it, to get that ink moving. And it's important to kind of do it right away when it's wet, because once your ink dries, it's going to be more difficult to move it. So we did it that way. All right. Now your colorless blender. Um, does not have a color, as you can see. I do have a little bit on my tip because it will kind of stain the tip, but the color will not come off. But you do need to take a plain piece of paper and just rub out the tip and you will get any color that you just used. It will rub off and it will basically self-clean itself. They're self-cleaning. You can rub this out and now it's back to clear again. So I can move on to my next color. That way you're not mixing colors together. All right, so we'll do more of that in a second. All right, let's move on to the petal. We'll do some bigger blending onto the petal there. Um, hi, I'm so glad that you're here. Can I use other markers on this paper? Yes, I, I'm pretty sure Copic markers um, will work on this paper. It's great for, any kind of um, marker art, I think um, the Bristol paper will definitely work too. I do not work with Copics, um, but I wouldn't see why you wouldn't be able to. So I would say yes. All right, so to create our pink flower, we're gonna use two different pinks. We're gonna start with our light pink and I'm using 
725. So first we're gonna start with our light pink. Now we're gonna do a little bit of freehand drawing. So, it, you know, do the best you can. It's not always gonna be perfect because remember, you're creating this by hand. So even the piece that I'm making tonight and the piece that I already did, they're going to look slightly different because I'm doing it by hand. And that's just how it is. It's, unless I would trace that, that's the only way I could get it to look exactly the same. So it's okay if you know yours doesn't look exactly like mine because you are doing this by hand. So I'm kind of doing this flower shape with these like, I don't know, four petals. I'm gonna fill it in. And I am using the brush side because I wanna fill in this nice big area. And while it is still wet, now I'm going to add some of my dark pink, just a little bit at the bottom, just kind of coming up here like this. And then I'm going to grab my colorless blender and I'm going to pull that color And you can see it starts to spread. And I'll fill in this part here. Now, I have a little bit of too much ink on here, so I'm kind of gonna rub a little bit of it off. That way, see how it changed, how it's not so dark? Because I rubbed a lot of that ink off, so I would get a little bit of a lighter tone at the top. Rub some of that ink off. There we go. So you can see how it created a really nice blend. And then I can rub off my tip and it's ready for my next color. All right, so super easy. The colorless blender is so much fun because it really can do a lot. And you see, I, I didn't really take me, I just did a couple strokes. I didn't overdo it. You don't wanna overdo the blending or you know the paper will start to pill. So just a little bit. All right, so we're done that part. We will go back and add all of our details when we're done. Let's get all of our stuff filled in here. So I'm gonna move down to this one down here at the bottom, and I'm actually gonna change the leaf color. I'm gonna do a blue instead of a green, just to kind of give it kind of a teal, give it a little bit of more visual interest. And when I'm blending, I'm always gonna start with my lighter color first. So I'm going to add my stem here coloring right over my line. And I'm gonna move the paper just a little bit so that I can get the right angle for my leaves. So here are my leaves. And flowers are, are fun to draw. Don't put too much thought in them, you know, just kind of all Flowers look different, they're all unique. And now I'm gonna add a little bit of the darker teal to the bottom here. And a little bit on the stem. And then we're going to blend. So I'm going to pull this blue up a little bit, up, even this out. There we go. And also when you're blending, you're kind of, you're lessening the harshness of that color. You're kind of making it a seamless line. So it doesn't just look like it's sitting there. Okay. All right. We need to rub this off so you can see the blue and then it just runs to clear. So you know it's clean. All right, so for this flower, I'm actually gonna turn my paper this, this way so that I can draw it. I'm starting with my light pink again, and we're gonna do kind of a different shape, kind of like a tulip -y. I'm not really sure exactly what it is, but kind of a tulip shape. We're gonna blend again. So we're going to put our dark color at the bottom and blend it on up. Okay. And again, if you feel like there's too much ink on there and you're not getting a light enough color, clean off your tip. And then that way, be able to make it a little bit lighter at the top. All right, 
we're going to change to kind of a yellowish. We're going to add some yellow to the top of here. So I'm going to create, I'm going to use my light pink. Make these little guys here and we're going to add the yellow right onto the bottom and blend that. Yeah. Blending a little bit of that yellow and that pink together. I really love the color um, that it gives. And don't forget to clean off your colorless blender. All right, let's move on to our next flower that we have over here. So again, um, we're gonna be doing our green because I kind of alternated the, the colors there. So we'll do our green, go right over top of our pencil lines so that we're not seeing that. And feel free to, don't feel like you need to have your paper one certain direction um, because you don't. You can move your paper around as you need to. I'm actually gonna switch to my brush side. Um, don't think that you need to hold it one certain direction. Cause like I want these leaves to look a certain way and it's just easier to draw them this way. Okay. Then we're gonna add again, add our dark green at the bottom. A little bit on the stem and then we're gonna blend. kind of evening that out so that it doesn't look like that dark green is just sitting there. Creates a nice blend. Okay, clean off your pen. All right, and then we're gonna add another one of these. I kept the flowers sort of similar. And remember, we wanna fill in this space right there. So I might, oops, let me use my brush side. I'm going to kind of fill it in, make it a little bit bigger. So it fills in that space right next to the F there. Put our dark pink at the bottom. And then we'll blend again, pulling that up. And you, And remember, just enough blending, do just enough. Um, you don't want to over blend and get your paper all messy. All right. My pens here. All right. So we have this one here. I'm going right over top of my pencil marks. So that way I don't even have to erase them. I went right over top. All right, so if I can get my leaves in here, I'm a little, a little close to my eye there, but we'll work with it over the top there. All right, and we'll add again, our dark blue to the bottom here. And the way that I'm doing my blending on my flowers is I'm doing a darker color at the bottom and going up. Uh, you definitely don't have to blend that way. Ooh, my pen still kind of had some pink on it. Um, you can change directions if you want. You know, whatever, whatever you want. Remember, lettering is very individual. It's your style, what you like, what you enjoy. You do you. All right. Uh, okay. So now we're going to add kind of a different style flower here. I'm actually going to start with the center first because we're kind of doing a daisy looking flower. So I'm going to start with my yellow center. So I'm going to draw a little circle in the center here, my yellow center. And then we're going to add six petals. So I'm gonna draw out six petals here. And you know what? I realized that didn't meet the stem. 
sometimes that will happen. So we'll fix that. Because remember, you're doing things by hand. And sometimes there's going to be, as Rob Ross used to say, happy little accidents. And that's okay. We will fix it. All right. So I'm going to blend this one again. Uh, all right. <laughs> Put a little bit of blue on there. And just be careful when you're making flowers like this, don't touch that middle part. These pens do blend so easily that you may blend into that yellow. So kind of try your hardest to go around it, but not in it. All right. So now we have our large flowers, but you see that we still have space here. So we're going to add these, just, just the petals, just the actual flower part. And then this one, it actually has leaves because I had a larger space to fill right here. So I want to put a little bit of a bigger flower to fill that space. And I didn't want to do another stem because I feel like I have the stems balanced nicely. You always kind of want to look for balance as well. When you're working on a layout, you want things to be even. So I don't want to add another stem there because I kind of just like the way that there's four. So I'm going to, since it's kind of that daisy shaped flower, I'm going to put my center first. And this time I'm doing a little blue center and I'm going to start with my light pink again. And I'm going to do three, four, seven petals on this one, seven petals. We're going to be making this guy yellow. So we'll do our light pink and then we'll add our yellow at the bottom. And again, kind of watch that center. You don't want to pull any of that blue up. You want the blue to stay exactly where it is. Let me make sure my tip is clean. Okay. So we'll blend up this yellow and I really like how this yellow and pink blend kind of makes, I don't know, the light pink makes a really great base for color on top. And, you know, don't be afraid to play around with, with different colors. See what blends, see what doesn't blend. You're going to find, you know, when you, you play around, you know, you got to see what you like and, you know, try out different, different color pairings. Some will look awful blended and some you'll be like, wow, that looks really neat. So we're going to add just two little leaves on the side here. I'm going to start with my lighter color first. Remember blending, we always start with our lighter color first. Put my leaves on here. Okay. And then we'll add our darker color. Just a little bit and then we'll blend that. Mix that up. Perfect. All right. One more little flower over here. And again, I'm doing that pink and yellow combo with the blue center. So I'm gonna draw the center first and do the pink. Oh, and you can see I kind of touched that blue a little bit, kind of got in there. That's all right. I'll just watch it and we'll put the yellow. And when I'm, you know, creating these flowers, I'm only putting a little bit at the bottom because a lot, a little bit of ink really does go um, a long way because you don't want it to be completely dark on the entire petal. You want it to be darker at the bottom and lighter at the top. So I'm only doing a little bit of ink at the bottom. 
And you can also do this kind of blending technique um, with letters too. That is really fun. It's not just for, you know, illustrations and flowers. I mean, the blending is perfect for flowers in my opinion, but you can also make some really cool letters um, with this technique as well. All right, so we have all of our flowers created. So we have our words, we have all of our flowers created and drawn and blended and they look beautiful. And now it just needs that extra little pop. It just looks a little flat. Um, so that's always, it's always like the fun time where you can go in and add, you know, the small details that really bring, you know, the piece to the surface and really make it pop out at you. So we are gonna be done with our colorless blender. I hope that you enjoyed using this. If you've never seen one before, there's a lot of really neat things you can do with it. Color on it. That's what you use it for, blending. All right, so we're gonna add some little details here. You can see in my original, I added some details to um, the leaves, to some of the flowers. And I also added some little stars and dots just to kind of give it a little bit of extra visual interest. So let's start with our leaves. I'm going to use the darker color of um, the green and the blue to add the D. I'm just gonna do some simple lines and dots, very easy. You don't have to make it super complicated. You know, I'm just going to draw some lines, kind of like the little veins on the leaf. Add a little bit of detail, super simple. Okay. Then I'm gonna add my darker blue. And instead of lines on the blue ones, I'm going to do little dots, kind of like little speckles, just kind of changes it up a little bit. Um, then, you know, the lines just adds a little something. So I'm just very gently filling in and I'm only doing the little dots at the very bottom of the leaf. Just kind of gives it a little something. So just putting them at the very bottom. There we go. So just kind of, you know, adds to it a little bit. Okay, now to these larger flowers, we have, I'm gonna be using my yellow, kind of giving them these like pollen pieces, I guess. I don't know, not a flower expert. I don't know what they're called, but adds a little something. Okay. All right. So I think our flowers are set. Now we're going to fill in any extra space we might have with some smaller things. And I love to add stars. I'm just a very star kind of person, but you could put anything else that appeals to you in these areas. So these two areas right here, I didn't want to add flowers. Um, so I left those for stars. So I'm going to use the bullet tip to do the stars because I want to have a nice fine line and the brush tip doesn't offer that um, for what I'm doing. So I'm going to do kind of these, these retro -y star shapes. I love this shape and I'm just kind of draw the outline and fill them in. Fill in this negative space right here. Okay. And we'll put a little one up here and we'll kind of vary the sizes to again, create that balance. I don't want them all to be exactly the same size. I made these kind of big because I needed to fill in that space, but these other ones I made a little bit smaller. And these pens are great because they do offer the two, two sides. You do get the smaller tip and you get the larger. I'm gonna do some stars in the pink too. This is actually my favorite Tombow color, it's pink 725. Um, it's just my favorite. It's 
just what I really love. It's kind of one of my go-to pinks. And, you know, you do that when you start lettering or start doing, you know, painting or whatever, you kind of always find a color that you, that you really kind of connect with and go for. Fill in our little stars here, put a little star in here. You can see I'm changing the sizes as needed to fit into where I'm fitting them. And I'm trying to create a well-balanced kind of frame around my words. All right. All right, so I added some little stars and now I'm going to finish it off with some small dots. And I'm gonna be using the yellow and I'm gonna be using the bullet tip again. And I'm just gonna fill in any spaces that are kind of empty. It just gives it something around here, around. All right, one in the middle there, kind of all these little spots where you all are. All right. And there you have it. We just made this um, daily affirmation. That's um, any kind of I am statement. And I encourage you to, if you have, you know, a mantra or an affirmation that you, that you live by, or that you maybe want to work on that week or kind of focus on, make yourself a really pretty sign, hang it up in your office, hang it up in your bathroom, hang it up in your bedroom and look at it every day. And, um, you know, that connection between mental health and art is really a really, really great one that um, you will enjoy. So I hope that you enjoyed watching me put this piece together. Um, if you were able to do it with me, I hope that you love it. If you don't, it, it's okay. Um, it is, especially if you're a beginning letterer, you're usually going to hate all of your work. It's just kind of a natural progression through your lettering. Um, the more you letter, the better you letter. So don't give up, feel confident in what you've made. Even if you hate it and you think it's bad, still be proud of yourself because it's something that you made with your own hand that only, you know, you can make. Um, yours will always look like you. It's your style. It comes from your hand. So, um, you know, if you were able to kind of put your own spin on this, that's awesome. Um, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I hope that you learned some, um, you know, layout techniques, some lettering, something fun with the dual brush pens. And um, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to find me on social media, put them in the, um, the Blip group, and I will be happy to answer any questions that you guys might have. So thank you so much again for joining me. I really had a wonderful time creating this with you and I hope you will take this affirmation with you. I am grateful for all I had and um, yeah, live by that and enjoy your brush pens. So again, I used Tombow products and uh, if you're not familiar with them, I really suggest you try them because I know you're gonna fall in love with them. So thank you so very much. Have a wonderful evening and I will talk to all of you soon. So thank you.